I've been thinking about cutters a lot lately. They make sense for right-handed pitchers who create good breaking ball shapes and don't really have a weapon with arm side movement to neutralize left-handed hitters. But there's a specific kind of cutter that intrigues me the most, and I'm gonna call it the Yankee Cutter. The average cutter thrown by a right-handed pitcher in Major League Baseball last season looked something like this. It was 89 to 90 miles per hour, it had eight inches of induced vertical break and three inches of glove side movement. It sits somewhere here on a pitch plot. From a discipline standpoint, cutters produce really similar results to four seam fastballs. Contact, swinging strike rates, whiff per swing are all pretty similar, but cutters distinguish themselves from four seam fastballs in the batted ball outcomes they allow. The exit velocity allowed on cutters thrown by right-handed pitchers was over three miles per hour slower than that of four seam fastballs. And the contact came at lower launch angles. Thus, it's not really surprising that right-handed cutters allowed less barrels than four seamers last season. The Yankee cutter distinguishes itself in one particular way that I wanna point out. It generally has more glove side movement than the standard cutter we just went over. That standard cutter occupies this particular part of our pitch plot. Then there's the bullet tight gyro slider, which is usually down here. It has more drop than the standard cutter. And then you have sweeper sliders, which have more glove side movement, so they're out here. The Yankee cutter nestles itself over here in this relatively uninhabited part of our pitch plot for right-handed pitchers. Now, I first started thinking about this shape, digging through minor league arms and a lot of their pitch data, and noticed that a lot of the Yankee pitchers had this shape. They were hitting this shape that had lift, and it had sweep, and it was hard. And it was unique relative to a lot of the other minor league arms that I looked at. So I decided to dig a little deeper. I asked an MLB source of mine for an answer to the following question. Which organization, from A-ball to AAA, which encompasses four levels, throws the most pitches tagged as either sliders or cutters that fit into the following box. Greater than four inches of induced vertical break, greater than three inches of sweep, and thrown above 86 miles per hour. That encompasses here on our pitch plot in that Yankee cutter territory, as long as the pitch again is above 86 miles per hour. And my intuition from looking through minor league data was correct. The number one team in baseball in terms of using this shape in the minor leagues was the New York Yankees at 9.8%. One of only two teams above 9% and more than double the MILB average usage of this shape. And thus, the Yankee cutter was born. It's not like they're giving the shape to every pitcher, and it's not like every pitcher has this exact cutter shape, which I actually think has a lot to do with biomechanics of a given pitcher, but that's a topic for another day. I see this pitch a lot in their minor league arms, and I think the poster boy of it is one of their top pitching prospects, Chase Hampton. His cutter averaged 8.5 inches of vertical break with five inches of sweep last season at 88 miles per hour, squarely a Yankee cutter. The performance of Hampton's Yankee cutter varied a lot. It allowed an ex-woba under 300 before July 1, and then it shot up over 450 after July 1. So perhaps it's still a work in progress for him, but again, that shape he's throwing is pretty unique. Among Yankee MLB players, Clark Schmidt touched this shape the 10th most of anyone in Major League Baseball, and Nestor Cortez kind of used it a bit. He was around 50th most in Major League Baseball. The four names that use this shape the most in the majors are right here. It's maybe notable that the top three are all throwing theirs 94 miles per hour plus, which is probably more of an outlier than anything. Again, our Yankee cutter is somewhere just over 86 miles per hour. If you look at the top 50 or so names throwing that Yankee cutter shape the most in the major leagues in 2023, it's not like it's necessarily flooded with Yankee pitchers. So I wanna emphasize that this is a player development thing. This is something I think they're doing in the minor leagues. They like this particular shape for whatever reason that we'll get into in a second, and they're throwing it a lot. It's just not actually something in the majors that they're throwing a ton. Before we jump into the reasons that the Yankees might prefer this particular shape, I do wanna point out something about that list of teams who also use that Yankee cutter shape more than average. Take a look at it one more time. They're all largely considered the best organizations in baseball from a pitching development standpoint. The Orioles, the Dodgers, the Rays, Houston Astros, Milwaukee does a pretty good job, Minnesota's decent too, Boston maybe not so great of a job, but they have churned out some interesting arms of late. We're probably missing a team like Cleveland who develops Velo really well, and Seattle who really like those low slot sweepers, but I think this list is pretty solid. Asking which team threw this Yankee cutter shape 
the most was one of those questions that generated an answer that caused me then to have even more questions, which I think is the sign of a pretty good question in the first place. Why do all the teams we consider good at player development throw this Yankee cutter shape a lot? And I think that answer is strikingly simple. Stuff matters. The dirty secret of stuff models is that they usually don't like cutters. I've always wondered whether this is because the intention of a cutter a lot of the time is just to generate some kind of weak contact, stay off barrel. And stuff models don't really believe that pitchers maybe have too much of an influence over the results of balls in play. And therefore, for a stuff model to like a cutter, it has to be number one, hard, because velocity is king, or number two, it has to have a lot of glove side movement because all stuff models deep down in their circuitry really just want cutters to be sliders. Stuff models are saying, hey, take that cutter that you think is for weak contact and just give me a whiff, please, I beg of you. More movement, more velocity generally means more whiffs. I think that's generally why stuff models aren't too keen on cutters. So maybe it's just as simple as those teams looking at a stuff model and also having a really good understanding of seam orientation. The stuff model says, hey, for a cutter to be good, we need it to probably have more horizontal or more velocity. So as an organization, you look at a guy and go, hey, throw that harder, or let's play with your orientation. And all of a sudden now it's picking up a couple extra inches of glove side movement. And poof, you have a pretty good cutter for the most part, according to those organizations stuff models. The other reason I think the Yankee cutter might be popular is that it serves a clear and direct purpose. Nick Pollock of Pitcher List always emphasizes how important it is to pitch up and into the opposite handedness of hitter. The reality is that most righties not throwing a cutter don't really have a pitch that can do this inside to lefties. The natural miss of most four seamers is gonna be up into the pitcher's arm side. So I don't think a lot of pitchers, especially a righty throwing to a lefty, have the command to put a four seamer up and into a lefty and bear the consequences of a miss back over the plate where all damage is generally created. Although this is anecdotal, I do think it's inherently easier for pitchers to locate pitches up, which have more backspin to them or more induced vertical break. And then the added glove side movement of the Yankee cutter moves that natural miss away from the pitcher's arm side to be more neutral or glove side. So the misses are now off the plate inside to a lefty. It's just generally a safer pitch. This is marginally backed up in the data too. All cutters thrown 86 miles per hour or greater by right-handed pitchers to left-handed hitters had an XWOBA of 339 last year where our Yankee cutter shape was 20 points below that. And the slug allowed on the Yankee cutters was about 60 points lower as well. But let's keep going even deeper. When I initially asked that question about Yankee cutters, I also thought in the back of my mind that maybe those organizations are just chasing sweepers that have lift to them, which is a reasonable thought for a progressive organization to have, especially in the boom of sweepers. Let's create a sweeper with more lift. Maybe it's unique than other pitches and maybe it performs better. So let's see which organization in the minor leagues throws the most pitches that have greater than four inches of vertical break again, but now we're looking at greater than eight inches of glove side movement and above 78 miles per hour. This list is interesting because yeah, it's a mixture of a lot of the teams from the Yankee cutter list. The Yankees, Houston, still in there, Milwaukee, Baltimore. We get some new names in Toronto and Seattle, but wait, where did the Dodgers go? Weren't they number two on our list for that Yankee cutter shape? Yeah, on this sweeper with lift shape, the Dodgers fell all the way down to 30th in the minor leagues. They only threw 2.9% of this lifted sweeper shape while the Yankees threw upwards of almost 11%. Now that is really interesting. You may have come to this video as a Yankee fan wondering what on earth a Yankee cutter is, but now our sights have changed a bit. How on earth did the Dodgers go from number two on one shape, the Yankee cutter, and with a subtle adjustment, they fall all the way down to 33? Maybe they just hate sweepers. That seems crazy, but I actually do think it's the case sometimes with their arms. They prefer good carry fastballs as an organization so much and most of their arms have more efficient fastballs, thus kind of higher arm angles and release heights. And as a result, most of their sweepers don't have as much lift as the parameter we put in place on that search, which was above four inches of vertical break. That shape is most commonly coming from pitchers with lower release heights, like many Mariners arms, the Brandon Fots of the world, etc. So I don't think it really has to do with the Dodgers hating sweepers per se. I think it really stems from the fact that they have a preferred fastball shape. They like high carry, high efficiency fastballs, and then they kind of build a repertoire off that based on what the pitcher is inclined to throw, which is generally not these lifty sweepers. 
In a very simplified sense, I think the Dodgers just prefer good fastball shapes, where the Yankees are among the many organizations that probably prefer having really strong breaking balls and going from there. So that's kind of what I have on the Yankee cutter. It's a really interesting shape defined by the fact that it has more sweep than the average cutter per se, and perhaps it's thrown slightly harder, or at least they encourage guys to throw it harder. I think the poster boy again for it is Chase Hampton, who I think is a really good pitching prospect and we'll probably see at some point in the majors. And it's not taking over the majors right now. I think the question going forward is whether this is just something they teach on the minor league side and it always stays on the minor league side, or does it eventually take over at the major league side? or are there potentially problems with the offering. We saw them use Clark Schmidt's cutter, which I think is, is right in that territory of a Yankee cutter a lot. It kind of got beat up and then he evened out as the year went on. So maybe it's a development thing in the minors that stays in the minors, or maybe eventually we see some value at the major league level with the offering. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments on the Yankee cutter, as I call it, always shoot them in the comments. I'll be down there to chat more. Thank you for watching.